welcome to In Review, the show that looks back at the biggest issues and brings you interviews on subjects that matters to you with various guests. Coming up today, Mistress May, Theresa May, the new Prime Minister of the UK, in her first Prime Minister's questions, handled serious issues with a clear response as she took on Jeremy Corbyn. I suspect that there are many members on the opposition benches who might be familiar with an unscrupulous boss. <laughs> Remind him of anybody. Yeah. Trident Renewal. Do we as a community understand what Trident Renewal is? This is the nuclear program, the renewal. At the same time, should these monies should be used for community programs? Donald Trump has accepted his Republican presidency candidacy. His speech outlined his visions for the future with him as a leader. I am the law and order candidate. I know the time for action has come. The Labour Party is still in the midst of a leadership battle with Angela Eagle, the Eagle did not land, bowing out of the race to support Owen Smith against Jeremy Corbyn. Black Lives Matters, that is still in the news. Um, peaceful protests around the world, working to change America, but at the same time we are seeing more shooting, which is very concerning, which is happening. And finally, the recent shootings in Munich, which followed on straight from Nice in France, which is a terrible day for Europe. Today, we are joined by two guests who will give their insights on some of the top stories from the week. Welcome to the show, ladies and gentlemen. And today I'm joined by two guests, Dwayne Brooks, OBE, who is the people's politician, the country leading person on Stop and Search, and as well, Megan Domus, German Jamaican studying law and living in London. She described herself as a United Nation enthusiast. Welcome, both of you. Uh, thank you, Sylvia. <laughs> thank you for having me. Now, what we're doing now, we're talking about some of the big news of this week. And as you have heard before, I've listed a few of them. But I want to talk first about Theresa May, the new Prime Minister. She took on Jeremy Corbyn in the House. Some people say she ripped him apart or whatever like that, or she ha had him. And um, some others say as well, Jeremy Corbyn stood his ground as a people's person. Now, what is your take on Jeremy Corbyn? Well, firstly, Theresa May, I believe, has been the best Home Secretary in my lifetime um, in politics. She has done amazing work around Stop and Search, also around the powers for the IPCC. Now, I didn't actually see the question time, yes. the first question time of Theresa May, but I have watched Theresa May develop from 2010 till now. Yes. And as a minister, she's been a wonderful minister. As, a home as Home Secretary, as a minister. Now, what people need to understand is being a minister and just an MP, two different jobs. Mm -hmm. Theresa May will always have an advantage over Jeremy because he hasn't been a minister recently. So that tact and guile that Theresa May would have learned as being a minister, Jeremy wouldn't have. Uh, Megan, what's your thoughts? As Theresa May is a second woman prime minister, do you think it's woman's time now? I mean, you're German, you're based in Germany. Um, German Chancellor Merkel, is it woman's season? Well, I hope so. I think there will be a fear of always Theresa May being compared to Thatcher. I think that's something that cannot be avoided because uh, whatever stance she takes, especially in the Prime Minister's questions when people say that she was so firm and so brutal yes. in saying the truth or being honest, uh, I think people will try to compare her and say either she's not as good enough or she should do more. But I'm pleased with her. I think she did very well in the first week and it's a tough job ahead of her. Uh, and it will be nice and very interesting to see how she will, uh, what kind of relations she will maintain with Merkel, because Merkel is very similar in that position of being very stoic and uh, diplomatic and clear, and not quick to give uh, a talk or you know comments on anything just like that. Okay, fantastic, Dwayne. I want to come back to you quickly on that. You mentioned in the opening. I mentioned about your stop and search. I'm um, leading expert. Now, Theresa May also played a very key, sort of remind even the black community as to the work Theresa May did with Stop and Search. Well, firstly, we all know the history yes. of Stop and Search. Yes. 
and the implications it has for young black men in London. What Theresa May has done is she's brought the police to task and she's been the only Home Secretary to actually do so. A couple of years ago we had uh, Theresa May stand up and say that what we all know black people are disproportionately stopped. A message that I asked the Home Office to stop reporting on because to tell everybody that black people are six, seven, eight, nine times more likely to be stopped than white people is actually telling black people and white people that we are committing the most crime across the country. So I asked the Home Office to stop that and, and they seem to have stopped that and that was down to Theresa May. The other thing she's done is set up the best practice stop and search across the country. So in a sense we're monitoring the 43 police forces across the country on how they use stop and search. Recently the HMIC reported on the effects of that and 13 police forces were suspended from the scheme because they hadn't changed the way that their officers were stop and searching young people on the streets. No other Home Secretary has done that. So for me she's shown the way that she will not tolerate police forces up and down the country abusing their powers. So therefore, one could say then that Theresa May um, plays a very pivotal role in regards to highlighting the cases or some of the plights of black people in this country. Unlike many people are actually saying, oh, she's a conservative, so she's just a typical one. That's true. And, and, and she was looking at the, light, the plight of black people in regards to stop and search. What she also has done, though, is she has made some changes at the IPCC. So back in 2012, when I was a, a, a Lib Dem councillor, I put in a motion at our conference to empower the IPCC. So in effect, give the IPCC more powers, especially around deaths in custody. Yeah. Theresa May adopted that. And that came into law in March 2013. And what we now have is we have a situation where if there is a death in custody, yeah. the IPCC can now summons police officers to attend an interview. That was never done before. And what used to happen, you have a death in custody, a year, two years on, the family have never had an account of what's happened to their loved one. The IPCC were never able to get the police officers to attend to do an interview. That has now changed, and that was down to Theresa May. So, uh, Megan, now tell me now, what, do, what are your thoughts about, even? let's talk about that question time briefly, whereby many people are saying that Theresa May had, had it better than um, Jeremy Corbyn. But at the same time, Jeremy Corbyn have a groundswell support within the UK. Would you consider that he's standing up more for principles while the Conservative Party is standing up more for winning it across the dispatch box? Well, I think Corbyn will always appeal to a part of the public that mm. Theresa May can't tap into just because he is so different and he is a very principled man. I, I respect him for that. Uh, however, when it comes down to it, I think if she was to call for a general election, which is unfortunate that she didn't, because I think at this point she would win it, without a doubt, um, especially with the troubles within the Labour Party. Um, I think Theresa May will do a better job because in the worldwide um, perspective, I think people respect her more or, or at least know what she's capable of. Okay, thank you. Thank you for that. Now, Trident. Now, Trident is another thing which... Um, um, when, when the word mentioned Trident, and let's talk about the black community, the people will think about Operation Trident, which is black and black violence uh, against each other. But Trident now, which was in Parliament recently for the renewal, which, which went through. Um, Dwayne, I know you've got controversial views about Trident. Maybe it's not controversial, but tell us about Trident. So the vote was whether or not we renew Trident. Yeah. And there are... Uh, there are different, if you look at different websites, you look at the cost of what the renewal of Trident would be. Some are estimating 40 billion, right up to 200 billion. Mm. We don't have that money to waste. We do not need Trident. We do not need nuclear weapons in this country. There is no threat to this country, and there will be no threat to this country in the future. Where there are threats is in our internet structure. That's what we need to be protecting. Because power stations can be shut down. 
electricity can be shut down. We're all going to have electricity meters and gas meters that are run via the internet. That's where the threat's going to be. There's not going to be any threat of any country using a nuclear weapon against us. But at the same time, you've got North Korea, which have a, a massive stockpile in nuclear weapon. You also have America, who has their nuclear weapon. You've got Russia with a nuclear weapon. Megan, do you think it should be renewed or should all that money go toward building community centers? In a perfect world, it should go to building and um, for the people and civilians. And if anything, in a perfect world also, the civilians should have a say in whether it should have been renewed. But at the end of the day, it's not. And there's always fear. And I do disagree in that part that UK will always be at a risk. Um, no matter how much uh, we try to pretend that maybe, you know, people won't risk that. And the thing is, I think it, it forms some sort of security blanket. It's not a deterrent in the sense that um, it will stop people from nuking if they have the nuclear weapons because the point is it's after the destruction has already happened, which is a good argument for saying Trident should not be renewed. However, at the end of the day, I think until all countries are willing to get rid of their nuclear programs, which I don't see many of the big ones like Russia or USA um, um, giving up, just because of that security, I don't think it will be possible. Now, now talking about that, I mean, you talk about giving up the nuclear weapon. Um, you got a Trump factor, which is coming in very soon, his hand on the nuclear weapon. Theresa May said something else, and this is what Theresa May said. Many people, that's why many people said she's cold and she's, uh, she's very callous, because she said, the question was asked her, would you press the button for nuclear to launch nuclear weapon when you know that 100,000 people are going to die? She instantly said, yes. Yeah, but Silva, look, that's just politics, isn't it? <laughs> that's just politics. If she had said no, everyone would say, no, you wouldn't want to protect the country, etc., etc. Yeah. We, we, we need to come back down to reality. Yeah. Let's say Russia launched a nuclear arsenal assault on us. What would we have? 15 minutes to respond. We're not going to fire nuclear weapons back in 15 minutes. Mm. Before there's any response, we'll be dead. Mm. It's not a deterrent. It doesn't help anybody to have nuclear weapons. That's the fact. And that's the only country we can say, just talk about North Korea. North Korea doesn't have the capacity or the capability to do so. It's that, that's never going to happen there. So we would only be looking at Russia. Russia, 15 minutes response time, we'll all be dead. So it's not a deterrent. So therefore, Jeremy Corbyn, would we say Jeremy Corbyn is right on this one? Uh, I don't know what Jeremy Corbyn's view is, but my view is, is we don't need nuclear weapons. Well, Jeremy Corbyn's view is that he's against renewal, he's against um, nuclear weapons, and therefore he's completely against that. So therefore, and one of his great points is having lots of um, people on the ground who also is not support of renewal. Yeah, well, I think in looking back in the Cold War and the mutually assured defense, 15 minutes might not be a long time, but if if there is uh, if in 15 minutes the whole of the UK government is obliterated, then the Trident program is is uh, made so that they have orders under sealed, uh, well sealed orders where they do where they can um, reply and send an attack straight back to whoever uh, sent it. Uh, I don't know if. I think for me at least it would be a good deterrent if you know that if you press and, and send a nuke to UK that you will have the same possibility return to you uh, even if it doesn't work out I think that is a really good reasonable response and so I disagree with Corbyn. Okay, you disagree. So ladies and gentlemen, that is a good point that um, we all should know about Trident, that is the renewal of a nuclear weapon, not about Operation Trident only, um, which is black and black violence, but also understanding nuclear weapons and the impact. And also, should this be for um, community instead of for spending lots of money for nuclear deterrent when, as Dwayne said, it won't make a big difference. Now, one more thing on the UK. Um, Jeremy Corbyn is now going to be challenged by um, Mr. Smith because the eagle did not land, which was um, um, Angela Eagle. Now, the, 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 the Labour Party has never had a woman's leader and the opportunity just missed them a while ago. The Conservative had a two women's leader. Um, what's your thoughts about Labour and their plight? Are they on their way out? <laughs> Silver. Politics, <laughs> politics is a game and, and right now, too many people are taking it personal. Yeah. 
you know, you, you have to be able to play the game in a certain way and use your skills and ability. And Corbyn is doing that. That's what Corbyn is doing. And everybody hates him for it. And that's the issue here. I believe uh, that Corbyn will probably win and he'll still be leader. And then it becomes interesting. And when I see what's happening in, in the news with the Labour Party, I wonder to myself, if I then say in my constituency, which is where a, a Labour MP is sitting, if I say, well, I have no confidence in you as a leader, you should resign. Should you resign? Because that's what the, that's what the MPs are saying. Yeah. They're saying that Jeremy should resign because they have no confidence in him. So if I stand up and a number of other people stand up in my constituency, Labour sitting MP, and we say, well, we have no confidence in you, you should resign. Would that Labour MP resign? Mm. No. So it's all a game. Is it a game, Megan? I agree with him. I think it is a game. But I do believe that Corbyn has uh, the support that he needs. And I think at the end of the day, he knows and he, as he said, he's playing a game and he knows what, when his time is right, you know, and he still has a lot more things or an ace up his car. It's interesting you said the time is right as Big Ben started to bang, you know what I mean? You know, <laughs> I want to touch quickly, uh, just before we wrap up, I want to quick touch, uh, touch on the United States with Donald Trump has now accepted a nomination to run against Hillary Clinton and things are going crazy in the States now. People are saying it's imploding, America is going backwards, Black Lives Matter is exploding as well, which they're calling a racist regime. The Donald Trump, do we see Donald Trump as the next president of America? What's your views on him being the man that touched the nuclear weapon, that have control of nuclear weapon? <laughs> it's never going to, it? well, when it comes to America, anything can happen. Because as we know, America is the bully of the world. And if America doesn't like you, you know, America breaches international law and does all, commits all sorts of atrocities, as we've seen in Iraq, Afghanistan and Libya, most recently uh, in Libya. 50-50, isn't it now? Uh, for the people of America. For me, it's it's sad that we go from an articulate black president to somebody who Barack trumped, which was Hillary Clinton. So Barack trumped Hillary Clinton, and now we may have a Trump or a Clinton, uh, which for me, America is going backwards. And, and it it sends out this message to us, doesn't it? All black lives matter, and we have all these demonstrations, but the, the power isn't in the demonstrations, the power is where you vote. Yes. And America should be, black America should be looking at itself now and asking themselves, how have they now gone backwards mm. from Barack? Because that's what's happening, they're going backwards. How has that happened? Now, Megan, as a United Nation enthusiast and seeing what is happening in America, do you think, do you believe black people have actually tapped into what makes the difference other than the demonstration and the noise trumping? I'm not sure. As he said, demonstrations only is one thing yeah. and it's the rules and the laws. And I mean, Obama has been in office for so long and from the very beginning, he said that he wanted to put in gun control, but it's been near impossible if you don't have the support of those who can actually make those laws pass through. Um, and. I, I just wanted to comment on what was previously asked in terms of Trump. I hope he doesn't win, and I think it is a backward uh, thing. But when you look at the people who are voting for Trump, it's the fact that they're being misled by so many... Um, they, they're misled by what they believe is, is hate and fear-mongering. And um, I think that's sort of spurred on by a number of factors. And that is almost fair for fearful for me because before the Brexit I saw the same things and people being misled to believe that um, Brexit would be the best and of, and of course the Republican Party is linking Brexit to their source you know well yeah fantastic. well anyhow ladies and gentlemen that's all we got time for today I mean there's so much more that we could speak about like what's happening in Munich as well which is terrible I mean Megan I just want to quickly you're from Germany I mean Munich it's terrible and what I feel more frustrated about is that everyone's going to say this is another reason uh, for extremist Muslims why um, we've we've taken so many steps forward we try to welcome refugees but it also seems like you're also taking 10 steps back um, because every attack no matter how isolated it's always going to be connected somehow um, which is unfortunate because that falls back to a population that is uh, victimized then. 
And Dwayne, one last but, but, Well, it depends on, on your skin colour. See, if, you know, if you've got a shade of brown in your skin, you're a terrorist. Um, and if you're a white person, oh, you've got mental health problems. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining In Review and see you next time. <laughs>